If I buy a drink at the club and it makes me funnier, can I claim that as a write-off as a business expense because I am Absolutely. funnier because Absolutely. of the drink? Clem would put it down as performance enhancer. Right. <laughs> I think if the IRS saw a return where like, someone was claiming that they were paying for performance enhancers, they might have <laughs> wanted that return. This podcast is not financial advice. It is for entertainment purposes only. Get ready to laugh your assets off because this is the Lighter Side of Finance podcast. Now here's your host, Billy C. All right, we are here on the Lighter Side of Finance. First of all, I want to introduce our panelists. And we have with us uh, first Tara, G ladies first, Tara Jean O'Brien uh, from our panelists, uh, writer, comedian, actor based in LA. You've been on, now I wasted a lot of time uh, because of you. Just want you to know that because of <laughs> headline writer for The Onion. Yes. Um, yes. I, I, I spent oh, many. Onion. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and Tara has appeared on uh, Conan as well as appearances on a, a show. I, I actually was a regular uh, viewer of the show. Tosh.0 oh was one of my favorites. Oh, wow. Really? Good. Y yes, I love that show. Yeah. And uh, I even go back and and because it's like streaming now on Pluto. I don't know if you've ever watched Pluto. There's a mm -hmm. Tosh.0 mm -hmm. channel on Pluto. <laughs> I mean, he was on for so long. I'm not surprised. There's so I don't know how many episodes he had. Yeah, yeah, but always good stuff. And then you've been on General Hospital. I was, and 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 I noticed recently in your social media that um, you're you're working the poll. I mean, you're a poll worker. That's right, I am. <laughs> Just like what you think, just like that. No, 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 no. I uh, uh, so, like all of that. No, I've I've been um working as a poll worker for the elections, the last three elections, because I uh, hope America still exists soon. That's my hope. Is I I help it still exist through voting. Um, and I have man, I have learned a lot about uh people who vote. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, only, I'm the only one to heard that wrong. The no, that's what that was my intention. I do a bit about. Oh, okay. This, like, I, was gonna, again, I, I was like, it, it, the reason why it's confusing is because I'm from Nevada, and when you say you work the polls in Nevada, it just it means something different. And <laughs> yeah, no, it, it means so, the same thing in Omaha too. I'm just gonna oh, say yeah. that's some, yeah, it means something anywhere. <laughs> but Look, I mean, there's an art in it too. I wasn't like you know what I mean <laughs> judging. I thought there's an art, you know. Listen, look, I could not do the things that those women do on a pole. I, I dare you to try to climb a pole like that and then just hook your thighs and stay there. Like, you can't do they it. They have a new mechanism now where it spins on its own so they don't have to get, like, the, you know, that's Chafing. a that's a patented design someone came up with. Engineering, I'm just saying. Engineering is <laughs> applicable everywhere. Yeah, JP, you're solving problems. You're solving problems is what we're doing. <laughs> we're solving problems. If you double dog dare me, I might try it. A dare doesn't mean anything anymore, but, you know, <laughs> maybe. Well, I think that that's a perfect segue uh, right into uh, JP Lambiase. Uh, you uh, have an engineering background, it sounds like, but uh, I, I love your bio. Uh, adopted South Korean into an Italian divorced half Catholic family from upstate New York, and now you do comedy. It's wor It's wordy. It is wordy, <laughs> but, but we, can, we can get to the point there. And But I also a uh, YouTuber. But yeah, it's interesting, though. Growing up, like I was adopted, but um, they kind of treated me like they, if they were Asian parents. They're like, no, you know what I mean? Like no acting. No, I wanted to be an actor. I wanted to do all that. They're like, no, you're going to be an engineer. So I did go to school uh, for the stable job. But the thing is, while I was an engineer, I secretly was building my YouTube audience. Um, so I kind of compare myself to Tony Stark. I got like taken by terrorists and <laughs> I worked, you know what I mean? Like worked real hard without them knowing. And then I escaped with a machine, you know? So, and then of course we have on the panel with us, Clem Jameson, currently a successful comedy channel. You have on TikTok jokes from the bunker, uh, grew up to, uh, 250,000 followers. And, uh, tell us about, uh, low gear comedy and uh, quick draw. So yeah, low gear comedy is my new passion. Um, we're doing comedy production in Omaha right now, uh, video production, audio production, show production. Uh, we actually just teamed with another group to do uh, quick draw comedy, a uh, new Sunday podcast uh, live. Everybody accuses us of ripping off Kill Tony. So we ignore that and just keep doing our thing and what we do. And uh, it's a lot of fun. We've been, uh, we've been trying to grow the Omaha comedy scene here and uh, have a lot of fun doing it. That's what we've been doing. 
Have you seen that? Where it seems like every time somebody comes out with something that's exciting, oh wait, you're ripping off somebody else. It's it, there's no original ideas, right? Uh, absolutely, there's no good ideas left. So we got to rip somebody off, right? Somebody's <laughs> going to rip this podcast off someday. Mm-hmm. I hope, right? Because that means we made it. If you get ripped off, right? Thievery is the best form of flattery, is what I like to say too. So we are into um, the dreaded tax season. I'm mean, comedians pay taxes too, right? That's not true. That's a lie. No, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> Cash. Was I supposed to laugh at that? <laughs> Maybe. Well, Bella's not, the, Bella's not the IRS, though, right? But, you know. Yeah, exactly. Oh, Bella's not going to get us in trouble. Okay, yeah, then I stand by IRS. my comment. Yeah, no. Hold on. The IRS can not. watch this, right? It is open to watch. Like, the IRS people can watch this podcast, right? I'm I rethinking whether I want to do this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I don't work for the IRS, but I'm okay. not the like, IRS. I- I'm not okay. going to report anyone. <laughs> I'm a fantastic bookkeeper, by the way. I have I have very well filed. Man. <laughs> I own a book. I have a file cabinet. Bella R- Rubiton. Did I pronounce that right? B- Rubiton? Rubinton. Rubinton. I'll get there. I'll- Bella Rubinton. Okay. And uh, you've been a tax preparer since 2020. Right. right. Many of us are faced with the, the misconceptions around tax season. Uh, so many things that I even didn't think. So I'm a dad and I have some minors in the household. Students and minors don't need to file or pay taxes. Is this a trick? Qu- is this a trick question? Yeah, that's like what I'm if, wondering. If they're, if, if, they're wor- if, if, if they're working. Yes. Obviously, because you have to, you know, any place you work at, you have to give them your, uh, I, I don't know all the forms. I'm kind of a guru, but uh, the W9, 10, <laughs> 1049, the 1028, um, the 1098, 1098. Yeah. Now you're just saying numbers. What, what, what does the expert say? So in terms of the uh, form 1098, whoever said that was correct, that form does exist. Um, that is to report. So that one is to report uh, college tuition expenses paid. What? So for college students between the ages of, I believe, I believe it's up, up to the age of 24, technically, depending on how much money they've earned, if they technically, if they live at home the rest of the year, their parents can still claim them. So it's a kind of a case by case basis, whether they have to file their own taxes or if their parents claims, can still claim them as dependents. So it's not really an so, e- easy thing to answer. So I could have been still feeding off of my that uh, earned income credit off of my twenty four year old son. So it's something called the other depend. It's something called the other dependent credit. It's only about five hundred dollars per kid. It's not as much as the child tax credit, mm. but a lot of parents still claim their children up until they're twenty four. I think instead of calling it the other like dependent, it should just be like the sad adult like tax write-off credit, right? It's because it's no longer like the that. child deduction. It's just the sad adult that still lives in your house. I mean, right? The failure to launch credit. <laughs> yes, that's right. So, well, in then- terms of minors who do not go to, who do not end up going to college, uh, parents are allowed to uh, claim those dependents up until the age of 19. Got it. But in terms of child entertainers, I think it probably, in, in order to get answers about that, it might be better to talk to someone who has more clients in California or a state where there just are more of them. I mean, how about this? I know that you say you don't work with child entertainers a lot, but what about the parents that steal all their money? Who pays the taxes? The kid that works or the parent that steals all their money? Just wondering. Just I, I mean, I think there are special laws for child entertainers. I'm not familiar with any of them because it's kind it's kind of a, a gray a gray area because technically under uh, normal circumstances, chil- I mean, where the, the children are not making enough uh, income to need to file a tax return, children up until really the up until really the age of uh, 17 are not required to file their own tax return because up until the age of 17, they, they are still classified as dependents. But then when it turns into situations of the child making enough to need to file a tax return or sometimes out earning the parents. I'm actually not sure what happens. And I don't want to say something that makes absolutely no sense. When you said the dependent, if they don't go to college, it's 19. And then if they do go to college, they can claim them as a dependent for until they're 24. That's correct. So that's why parents want their kids to go to college. So we we can write them for tax credit. (laughs) I mean, I I don't think I don't, I mean, I don't, 
n- know if that's. I mean, if I was a parent, I'd be like, "You better go to college. I, I want my. I want a refund." Okay, but, <laughs> but know, at if, the end of the year, right? But if that, but if that college student also has a summer job or a job during the semester, and they earn an amount that goes over the standard deduction, then the parents really are not supposed to claim them. Then at that point, the college age dependent is supposed to file their own tax return. They're not supposed to, though. They're not right. supposed people to. People still, right. people still do this. They really shouldn't. I'm trying to be very vague here. I feel like we're in a legal podcast. This is like <laughs> like, like the law, the the lighter side of legal. <laughs> yeah, this this is another podcast. Yeah. yeah. This is a, this is a sad day for me because it is my son's 20th birthday today. So I just lost that credit. It's what Aww. I'm hearing. <laughs> so Sorry, I'm, I'm I'm just finding this out. Does does your son live with you? He does. Technically, I think there are some circumstances where people do keep claiming other dependent credit for their dependents that live with them if the dependent lives with them year round if let's say that dependent doesn't work at all i think there are some circumstances or or if the dependent is disabled there are some exceptions where basically if there are uh, children who never move out then the parents can just keep claiming them i don't want to give you any ideas but <laughs> there are ways where you can where you hypothetically could continue to claim your child if they continue so, to live with you if i'm hearing you right what you're telling me is i need to kick my son out tonight right <laughs> no <laughs> if you can prove that you are st- that you are still the one responsible for paying all of the head of household costs and and your child uh, is not contributing like up to 50 percent of the household costs because of the way that head of households the head of household status works is that the head of household has to uh, pay for 50% or more of the household expenses, then there are sometimes ways where you can continue to uh, claim claim a dependent, but the most you would get for that would be other dependent credit. Yeah, I'm starting to wonder whether I actually contribute 50%. I mean, financially I do, but just emotionally and spiritually, I'm not sure that I'm <laughs> contributing the 50%. So, it's yeah, mostly it's about info. financial con- It's about financial contributions. Who, who, pays, gotcha. who pays the rent, who pays the mortgage, that kind of thing. Who, who buys the groceries. Clem, it's, it's fine. You could still be a deadbeat dad. No one's going to worry about that. Perfect. IRS. Perfect. That's, that's really the question I was asking. Can I still be a deadbeat dad? <laughs> so I appreciate the answers there. I mean, technically, if people have their uh, have have old, older relatives living with them, and they can prove that they are that they are the heads of household, even if the uh, relative that they're providing for is older than them, that there are cases where people can actually claim their parents. Yeah, so does my parents are on their worse. own. I'm not. I'm not moving <laughs> back in. They're not moving in with me. That didn't work when it worked. So yeah, that's great. <laughs> we'll we'll just pay. I'll just pay the taxes. I'll kick my son out and pay the taxes. We'll be good. So I think that's a fair trade. Now we have a a, a bunch of questions we want to get to Bella, but before we dive into that, another misconception. A lot of us dealt with remote working. Um, I'm, I'm sure everybody on, on the pod right now, uh, has dealt with some sort of remote working, um, during the pandemic. And a common misconception is that remote employees can claim their home as a deduction. (laughs) The entire house. Is that, is that the misconception? You can claim your entire house. It's where they're doing their work, right? It's where their work is happening, right? Okay. Um, does anyone want to comment on uh, what you think, if you're a remote employee, you can claim on your taxes in terms of work for, working from home? Isn't it just the square footage of like your like your home office? Like, so say I had like a, a hundred square feet with like that's my office. Don't I get that, don't I get to do that? Yes and no. <laughs> uh, it's got to be like so dedicated the space. The only right? the only way that you can claim a home office on your taxes. The square footage is one is one of the two methods I believe. I believe there's another I believe there's another method. Uh, but I I mean, I did not work remotely during the pandemic. I worked in person the whole pandemic. Uh, and but I did have clients come to me and say uh, that they wanted to be able to claim their home office on their tax return because they were working remotely. The thing that most people do not know about what about what makes a home office eligible to be claimed is that it needs to be a dedicated office space in your home 
and if you use it for any other purpose, so if it's a combination home office and a playroom for a kid or a home office and dining room, if it is not only a home office, you cannot claim it at all. I nailed it then. Yeah. And it's a very like that's very sub that can be false sub- subjectively. Yeah. Where like, you know, you just make a room and then when you get audited, you just clear it out. You just right. make it look you know, you take the toys and you're like, kids, put the toys in the closet. Well, the the closet's where Tara works, we heard earlier. So right. like Tara, be careful claiming that closet. If there's clothes in there, you can't claim it. But if there's no clothes <laughs> yeah. in there, then you can claim it. Unless That's you funny. call the clothes sound dampening and then you can claim it again. They are sound dampening. First, there you of go. All. Perfect. Okay. I'm just saying. I'm not. I'm. I mean, I am not going to tell you what to do in terms of your home office claims on your own tax returns. But if anyone, if anyone was one of my clients, and they were to say something along the lines of that they weren't sure that their home office was only a home office, I wouldn't put it on their return. I need like the Better Call Saul CPA. That's the one that yeah. I, I, need. Yes. I need. The one that I need the bending the rules CPA. Yeah, Bella, you um, seem like you have a lot of ethics and standards. I don't know if we would work well. Yeah, we're comedians. Like we <laughs> threw all that out the window a long time ago. I, mean, like, I, I also do comedy. I've been doing comedy for eight, eight years. I, I don't. I don't like it when my clients get audited. As far as I know, none of my clients have ever been audited. That's good. In the entire yeah. time that I've been doing taxes. Because if someone seems like they'll be an audit risk, I, 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 I will either refuse to do their return or I will tell them I will not put this information on your return because I don't think you'll be able to prove it. If they cannot tell me that they have the documents at home to prove something, especially with self-employment, I won't put it on their return. I've had clients get mad at me for this, but, th- but they never get audited. So, so back to the tax credits, is there a limit on how many child tax credits you can claim? Like, can I have 20 kids and claim 20 of them or is there a limit on how many? Um, as far as I know, there, I mean, if you can actually prove that the, uh, 20 kids are yours and I mean, do, do the 20, do these 20 kids uh, live with you or do they not? Well, I don't, I don't, I don't have yeah. 20 kids. I have four, but uh, you know, my wife's going to be mad if I get more man. credits, but yeah, we gotta, yeah. you know, maybe get better credits by having more kids. Like the Duggars, like the Duggars have I mean, a thousand. I, I don't right. think there's, I don't think there's a limit uh, to how many times you can uh, claim the child tax credit. I mean, once, once each kid uh, gets over the age of sure. seventeen, you're going to have uh, fewer child tax credits because that's the maximum mm-hmm. age that the child tax credit can be taken at. Clem, um, isn't that like a double-edged sword, though? You know. Yeah. Well, like, my right. wife's not going to like this news that we can have more kids. I'm just going to say that. So, <laughs> um, in in New in New York, uh, there is also a credit uh, called the uh, non-custodial earned income credit, uh, where if someone can prove that they are, I believe it is uh, current on their child on their child support, that and they they are actively at. Uh, paying child support through New York state and their kid does not live with them. They can still receive a certain type of the earned income credit. What if I'm just a really good influence on my friend's kid? That wouldn't count for anything. Okay. Bella, you don't have to rain on my parade. Totally. I think if you pay over 50% of my household, you can claim my kids if you'd like. I think, I think that's what we heard <laughs> earlier, right? Noted, noted. <laughs> Right. And, uh, for, for head of household, uh, the person who's claiming head of household needs to live in the same household. Oh, well, I no. hope you like Omaha because you're, you're, you're moving in. <laughs> more of the bills and then claim head of household. That doesn't work. <laughs> oh, okay. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Because then you could just be like a rich guy that just like helps all these houses out. Right, <laughs> right, right. I'd have to be a rich guy first, though. So <laughs> we mentioned the the dreaded A word um, earlier. Uh, we're talking about uh, keeping our head above water, and we don't want to see an audit. Uh, what are some of the the you know common triggers that things that trigger an audit? Sometimes audits are completely random, and there is nothing that triggers them. That is that's probably not reassuring. You, that means you can do everything on your taxes correctly, and the IRS can still randomly select you for an audit anyway. Sometimes they'll just want Jury you to duty. verify. So I was going to say, yeah. Sometimes they will just want you to verify all of your information to prove that everything matches. Like they'll want further verification of your income, when in reality you didn't do anything wrong. You've just been randomly pulled for an audit. Other times. Um, it's because they think that something that you've reported on your taxes does not line up. I mean, usually the uh, more complex a tax return is, the more likely it is to get audited. People who are self-employed get audited much more frequently than people 
who receive who receive W twos because when when you're self employed, especially if you are not paid on if you if you do not receive a ten ninety nine and you're just reporting your own income, the IRS will question it a lot because they don't have anything to check it against. So sometimes they'll ask. Uh, business owners for proof of receipts, proof that the numbers that they provided are true. So with the audit, uh, so I've been doing my own taxes now for 24 years using a software tax program. Mm -hmm. And this year when I went to do my taxes, I think I put the decimal place in the wrong spot or somewhere. And instead of getting like a thousand or 2000 bucks, it said that my return would be $1.2 million. So my question (laughs) is, my question is what type of motorcycle should I buy with that money? (laughs) Um, if if that is, I mean, and for the record, I actually corrected the issue. I did have something wrong that it said that was my refund. I knew that was wrong right away and corrected it, but I've been using that on stage as a joke, but it's still fun. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good, it's a good joke, but. (laughs) <laughs> you, yeah. I appreciate that. I appreciate okay, that. No, if, but if you bought the motorcycle, let's say you actually did this. If you actually right. bought the motorcycle because you thought you were receiving a $1.2 million right. tax refund. And let's, let's say the IRS gave you the refund before they realized that it was a mistake. <laughs> right. Then. So if the IRS, like sometimes the IRS does issue refunds before they realize that, that there's some, that there's an error. Mm -hmm. So there are cases where people have to pay parts of their refunds back. If like, if, if, so if you've spent money on a motorcycle and the IRS comes after you and says, we want that $1.2 billion back now, because let's say actually you owe money. What have you doubled it up at a casino? JP is onto something here. Yeah. Like what have you doubled up at a casino with the refund? Right. And then paid the government back with the winnings. Or it's simply doing this. This is way less risky. Put it in just a money market that makes like 6% or 5%. Yeah. You have to pay the interest. Do you have to, the interest you accrued? Do you have to, A, give them their money back? And then do you have to claim that interest? They, they, if, if, if your refund earns interest, this is if, if, this is if the refund is wrong. If the refund turns out to be too high and then something needs to be paid back. Right. Um, they won't come after you for the interest until the next time you file taxes because the way each uh, tax year works is in 2024 you're paying taxes on everything that everything you did in 2023. So, and if I only drive my motorcycle for work, I can deduct it next year and it's covered. This is perfect. I love it. If you can prove that you only drive your motorcycle for work, well, actually. So depending on what your uh, what your business is, you don't need to only drive your motorcycle for work. You need to just keep track of how much of the time, oh how much of the miles of it is for work, and half of it is uh, sorry. Which sorry, which part is for work? Which part is for personal use? Right. Because then, is there's because then basically like there's this thing called the standard mileage rate. There are two different ways mm-hmm. uh, to claim vehicles on taxes. You can either take the standard mileage rate, or you can use gas and tolls. Mm-hmm. And more like actual expenses as opposed to the standard mileage rate. Um, I, but I, I just think that JP just started. Like, I'd like to be on the ground floor of your Ponzi scheme, sir, because yes. I think this is a great idea. We I have enough people is, to build a pyramid right now. We could definitely I'm, do this. I'd saying. like to be a founding member. Is what my, right. my mom always said that she's afraid that she's going to see me behind bars because I have a criminal <laughs> mind. I, mean, I think the laws on pyramid schemes vary state by state, so I think it would depend on uh, what states each of you are in. You're in we Texas. Several I, states cover here. We, we yeah, Texas, Texas has got to be best. There's no right? rules there, right? Like they're yeah, going to be. We're like, going to avoid California. Fun. I don't. I don't actually know. Yeah. So everyone would have. Everyone would have to Google this. I. I don't know. I, I think. I right. think pyramid schemes are illegal in Pennsylvania, or they're very, very restricted in Pennsylvania. But otherwise, I just don't. No, I don't actually know what the laws are for pyramid okay. schemes in, in right. New York. I've never researched this. <laughs> I wonder if the people that tuned wonder if the people that tuned in to Lighter Side of Finance knew they was going to learn how to start a pyramid scheme. <laughs> I thought they knew that, right? That's not on the advertisements. I don't think that's going to be on any of the commercials at all. That's a bonus right there. Be a special bonus. This a bonus episode. That's right. That's right. <laughs> we should talk about money laundering money. next. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we could we could talk about bank <laughs> accounts, but this probably this, <laughs> this this could go very sideways. As if it already <laughs> hasn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there are ways for it to get worse. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> We're all holding back. I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's like ten yeah. things I didn't say already. <laughs> Agree. 
Well, I think one of the things that that we can all agree on is that neither one of us wants to pay taxes in any form or fashion. And do some people not have to file taxes? What if you're state? What if you're a stay-at-home ch- parent? If you're a stay-at-home parent, uh, that I mean, if you're a stay-at-home parent, I mean, if you're, I mean, if you're married and your spouse uh, does. Uh, does earn money, then you would still be required to file a marrying filing joint return if that's the tax status you're using. There's also married fi- filing separately. Oh. I mean, if you're a stay at if you're a stay at home parent and the only people who uh, live in the household are you are you and your kid and you're not legally married, then that would be a bit of that would be a bit of a different case. I mean, if if you don't if you don't earn any income, then you are not required to file taxes. If you make under the standard deduction, usually you are not required to file either because basically that's just if you have any withholdings on uh, W-2s throughout the year, you might get your withholdings back. You, I mean, you might get some of the earned income credit, but otherwise you won't get much else. But really the main one is if you have absolutely no income at all. Because even if you make under the standard deduction, there might still be benefits to filing a tax return. Cash only. Got it. <laughs> no. If you have, if, we're rubbing up on Bill. That's what I heard. No. Yep. If, if you if you are self employed and you have a cash business and you make over it now, I believe it is uh, six hundred dollars from it because the IRS is trying to crack down on this. You need to file your taxes. It used to be that you could get away with making more money in a cash that. business, mm-hmm. but the IRS has realized that a lot of people who were uh, receiving their income in cash were not filing their taxes, so they're trying to lower that amount. Here's a question for uh, for 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 everybody. Uh oh. After lear- after learning about all of this, does anyone actually want to become a tax preparer? Oh no, definitely not. <laughs> I love oh. learning more about it. I will be perfectly honest with you because I am constantly trying to find every way possible. To, to be just a criminal. get deductions. To, to get, loop loop get deductions. He wants, <laughs> he wants the loopholes. You also, I mean, you also have to take a course and pass and pass a, like a knowledge test and everything. But I'm out. It is Honestly, very, it's a, a very easy process. I was just thinking there should be a job, just like when there's hackers and people like that. They usually get hired for security positions because their brain can see where the you know where the where the plot holes are, the loopholes are. They have a tax person that's so knowledgeable on the stuff where they say, Hey, this could get exploited and then prevent exploitation through the tax system. Right. It'd be a job. You'd make more money just exploiting it though. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Integrity though. I've always thought it'd be interesting to try to uh, start a tax business that specifically deals with uh, doing taxes for stand up comics uh, because it's an area that people who like who uh, do do not do comedy don't know very much about in terms of what you can claim, what you can't claim, that type that type of thing. Let's partner. Let's but do a it. lot, oh. but a lot of comics do not like, especially because they get paid in cash, uh, do not want to file taxes. So it's kind of a hard sell to anyone. Oh, and they don't make any money. Some some of them do. You'd you'd be surprised. There are comics who do make money. When you sit with them for like the hour or two it takes to do the return, you have to hear all their bits that are not worked out. I'm out. I couldn't do it. That's too much. That's like open. That's like open mic all day. That's all you're getting. Oh, no. like, I want to die. No, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely not. not. I mean, I'm already drained hearing that story. Yeah, <laughs> I'm. I'm back in now. I want to hear the. I want to hear these terrible bits. I. Re- I want to hear them. I'm a glutton for punishment. I want no, back. No, no, hear me out. Hear me out, kid. <laughs> okay, what, <laughs> I mean, the, I don't, the way that I see it, like, like so, like. Like just like my regular tax clients, like so, like some of them are are so difficult to deal with, or just like throughout throughout my job, like throughout my time doing taxes, some like some of my everyday clients who are who are not comics because again I have not gotten anyone to actually take me up on this. Uh, they are they are so difficult to deal with that sometimes I think it would be e- actually be easier to do taxes for comics. Well, there's no, there's not a lot of income, so you wouldn't have a lot of work to do. <laughs> I mean, just kidding. Just kidding. We're all very Yeah, you get the high paying guys. That's going to be, yeah, they'll be tough tough clients to get. There's tons of poor comics, but there's not a lot of rich comics. I mean, are they advising comics on how, on ways that they can uh, make more money instead of losing money? Yeah. Take that. 
financial like if, advisor. If, if I buy a drink at the club and it makes me funnier, can I claim that as a write-off as a business expense because <laughs> I am funnier Absolutely. because of the drink? Yeah. Absolutely. If Absolutely. it is a paid if it's a paid comedy gig, then I then I'd say yes. All right. <laughs> and I would even put it under food and beverage because you'd only get fifty percent with that, right? You would put it under like production costs. That's or- right. Supplies. You you you, you could you Supplies. could hypothet- you could hypothetically do that. It is very hard to claim food and beverages. I mean, if you claim miscellaneous expenses, then I mean you have to try to not get audited because then the IRS might ask what your miscellaneous expenses are. That's the only right. risk. Uh, but yeah, food and beverage you can't claim a hundred percent. And then he would Clem would put it down as performance enhancer. Right. <laughs> so performance that enhancing kind of drug essentially. <laughs> right. You don't want to ever classify something like as you don't ever want to describe something in a way that it would sound suspicious <laughs> on a tax return <laughs> because sometimes and I think if the IRS saw a return where like oh, someone cool. was claiming that they were paying for performance enhancers, they might want <laughs> to audit that return. I have some really bad advice I'm going to give. I just have to say that right now. But my uh, one of my business friends said. You're better off being extremely risky and aggressive because if you do get audited, paying that back is the cheapest loan that you could actually get. Again, JP, like this is <laughs> you're just firing it off. Your cohorts are like, be a criminal. Because they it. give you so right. much grace period and it's true put though. Put it all yeah. on red and let it ride, right? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, I'm thinking our next episode should be about bankruptcy because we're all going to need it after doing this. <laughs> just saying. I just want JP's book on all this. Oh, yeah. Can I co-author this that. with you? <laughs> I want to live stream a roulette wheel while we're doing this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. But, uh, Be- Bella, what, th- what other things that from other than what we've talked about here and JP's criminal actions, um, can a comedian uh, deduct? Uh, you know, what, what other uh, things can they actually deduct? I mean, the main, the main thing really to look at is, uh, is my, is mileage and car expenses. Okay. That's really the biggest uh, area of deductions. But then if you're, but if your comedy income within a year goes over $600, just from 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 paid sets which some for some people uh, for some people it it does i mean obviously not for everyone everyone's different that it might be a good idea to start uh, adding on a section to your tax return uh, saying that you are a self-employed comedian because of the reporting minimums technically i i think you can deduct clothes if i remember correctly if you're if you're any type of performer yeah, yeah for at least you, an actor, you, can, yeah. you can deduct you you can deduct your performance outfits if you have any thing uh, in terms of hair hair makeup but can you wear it anytime or does it only can it only be on stage i know it's supposed to be your you could only it has to be either for like a specific set or audition and it's uh, something that you would not normally wear i don't know if like right. like wear if you wear it again oh, like a uniform to, yeah it's, it's supposed yeah it's supposed to be something that you're buying specifically mm, for yeah. comedy purposes Right. And if you pay self-employment tax on just what you make with comedy, if you had another job, obviously, because you're saying that the you could have a job but also be self-employed, right? Yes. There are people who both have jobs where they get paid on W-2s and are also self-employed. Okay, okay. Yeah. What about this? What about the therapy bills uh, for when I, when I want to talk about what's happened during stand-up? That's deductible, right? <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about that one. Uh, but tech, but technically, but technically, if you are technically, if you are doing your own tax return, you can put anything that you want on it. As long as if the IRS sends you a letter and tries to audit you, you know how to defend it. Yes. You, if you, if you have receipts of your therapy and that you could prove that your therapy is a work expense that's necessary uh, for your comedy career and you want to spend your time arguing with the IRS about this, if they, if they audit you, that is completely your choice. I save a ton of money on therapy by just going to open mics and telling all my problems to everybody that's listening. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. I do think though that Bella makes a great point. If you can art, like it's all about having a good argument. And That's also right. when the IRS lady comes, we're comedians, be a little likable and charismatic. You'll win her over. You know, she'll be a lot more lenient. I don't, yeah, I don't I mean, know if that's true or not. 
I, I don't know about that. Um, <laughs> what do you bri- Is it like a fel- Is it a federal offense to bribe an auditor? Yeah, I think don't so. Do that. That's, you're not supposed to bribe federal officials. I think I don't think that's legal. <laughs> right. Don't do that. Right. And they're not armed, right? I don't. I don't think they are. Really, the. I mean, the. If you want to see a really interesting uh, portrayal of an IRS auditor, has anyone seen Everything Everywhere All at Once? Yes. Yes. Oh, J- Jamie yeah. Lee Curtis. Oh yeah. I mean, I've never yeah. met an IRS agent. Well, come to think of it, if. Some people are put, moving around a ton of money, right? I would almost feel like you would need protection if you're going to audit large amounts of monies because then you're in the realm. Money's dangerous. More money, more problems. You can get to the point where someone's just like, I'm screwed out of billions or whatever. I'm going to the IRS person or something. You know, like them or them or, you know, just like. I Are you in therapy, JP? Really yeah, I was like, JP, what is this guy for help? You know, with all of that's illegal, don't do it? <laughs> yes, <laughs> still illegal. Just That's the one thing we can't do, but yes, that's it's still true, illegal. Yeah. Right. I'm just thinking of the worst case scenario here. All right? That's all I'm saying. It's fine, though. Play devil's advocate, right? Yeah. Hey, JP, how close to rock bottom are you right now? Should we be concerned? Should <laughs> <laughs> we call someone for you? Yeah. This is, this is all for the lighter side of time. <laughs> you just... specialize in dark comedy? I'm going to assume that all I... of this is a joke. I'm still trying to find my voice, to be honest. I, uh... <laughs> Don't, if, if, it, if any of it is serious, do not kill people if... Oh, uh, I, on the record, on the record, the record, there's no, no, I would not, no, it's not, I'm not gonna, no, don't worry, you'll be fine. I don't know where you live. I mean, I don't work. Yeah, for the keep IRS. it that way for your safety. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, I don't work for the IRS. I'm not. I'm not worried. You're, you're yeah. safe. You're safe. You're, I mean, remember, had, you're I've in a safe. I've had clients yell at me enough about uh, owing money on their taxes uh, for yeah. eternity, and no one's ever come after me. Yeah. 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 I don't think Bella woke up this morning and goes, let me, I bet I'm going to have to explain murder to somebody. (laughs) Right. I I didn't. Um. Uh, Well, as, as we wrap up, uh, I'll throw it to, to our three panelists. If you guys have any, you know, parting words uh, for Bella and our audience. Well, so JP, I just want to clarify. I said earlier, I live in Omaha, but after hearing all this stuff, I just want to clarify. I actually live in Des Moines. So uh, (laughs) just putting that out there. Uh, Bella, I think you did a great job explaining some stuff here tonight. I, I've learned some things. I, uh, you know, uh, you know, we had we had a good time here and, and joking about a lot of stuff. But I think I learned something. Yeah, I'm I'm constantly fascinated with education. I always love learning. Um, I did learn a lot today, and also I'm very like very lazy. I like to cut corners, so I ain't gonna be like trying to find Clem. <laughs> You know, I ain't going to track them down. Like, it's just too much work. And the risk reward is not there. So rest <laughs> assured. Here's what I've learned. I have a couple of freezers in my garage. And I'm not going to tell you what's in them. Oh, but I am going to tell you that, uh, JP, uh, we need to sidebar some conversations. And now I didn't know that was what it was going to come out of today. We're going to no, have to change uh, the narrative here. We don't mean to need the running gag that I'm a m- Okay, like we gotta, we can't have that. This is the first episode, guys. I don't need to be typecasted. I didn't say. Listen, first of all, I didn't say you were a. I just said you could get me out of a tough situation. Guilty. You could get me out of a tough spot, and I'm ready. I needed that fixer. I needed a fixer. Uh, Oh, okay. So you're just like baiting me now. (laughs) You're baiting me with your freezers. I'm just asking a simple question. What would you do? That's all I'm asking. What would you, how would you take care of the problem? That's it. It's a simple Food prep. Food prep. Well, you were so great. Thank you. You, I, your question I didn't answer earlier, but would, would I want to go into tax preparation? Under no circumstances, I'd rather die. And I think that proved it today. I am not good with numbers. That This gives me hives. It makes me sweat. And I'm glad I don't do my taxes. But thank you for doing them because we need people like you who are smart. And not scared of numbers like me. Oh, thank you, Bella. Uh, and I appreciate the fact that you put up with us for so long. This was really, in- this was really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> she puts it so mildly. So You're so honest. I love it. Like, great. No sugar coating. Thank you. <laughs> it's great. It's great. This has been the Lighter Side of Finance podcast. 
Our executive producer is Billy C. Production assistance by Sam Moody. Our opening music is from BillClantonMusic.com. I'm your AI announcer. I am nobody, literally. Make sure you like and subscribe to The Lighter Side of Finance wherever you find us on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Be sure to visit our website, thelightersideoffinance.com. <laughs>